The 2000s drought in Australia, also known as the Millennium Drought, was widely regarded as the worst recorded since European settlement. Depending on where you lived in Australia, watering the garden, or even worse, the lawn, was all but forbidden. However, 10 years on in South Australia, that thinking has changed. Based in what is officially Australia's hottest capital, Adelaide, SA Waters' Greg Ingleton is an expert on new watering practices that take a very different approach. What we're exploring here in South Australia is the idea of smart watering. And what does that actually mean? We know that plants and grass and trees can cool the air down and we know that having a green park, green school ovals, that sort of thing, can actually improve that temperature reduction. During the last drought, our water security was challenged. Mm -hmm. In the state, it was seen as a, a waste of water to actually use water on a, a lawn and a garden. But the state has actually learnt a lot from the previous drought and put in recycled water systems where possible. The councils are doing stormwater harvesting now. So the water security has improved for most places within South Australia. So how did you come up with the concept of smart watering? Well, it was funny, I was coming back from a conference on urban heat islands in Melbourne and flying back into Adelaide Airport and I looked down and noticed how brown the airport was. And because part of my work involved looking at the recycled water use and the pipeline which runs next to the airport and the stormwater harvesting scheme that we've got there, I just put two and two together and thought, what would happen if we use that recycled water on the airport and what benefits could we get if we actually greened up the airport area around the runways. One of the risks was that we didn't want to increase wildlife activity, particularly birds. Birds and planes just mm -hmm. don't mix. So we put in a lot of temporary equipment to see if it would work and to see if we actually would get a temperature reduction. And it became apparent pretty quickly that we had uh, the ability to reduce that air temperature by at least three degrees on hot days. The main benefit that we're exploring now is the potential to improve aircraft performance. When the air is hotter, mm -hmm. it's thinner, so the planes need more runway to actually get off the ground. Mm -hmm. If the air is cooler and denser, they take off a lot quicker. So the airport experiment's obviously been successful. How can you transfer that to the home garden? Well, we've been doing some experimenting around the home and just to see what temperature reductions we can achieve by using water differently, more effectively, and gauging that benefit from a, a temperature reduction. Using a thermal imaging camera, we can see that the surface temperature of the footpath is around 50 degrees. The dead grass is closer to 60 degrees, and the live, healthy grass is about 30 degrees. So there's a 30 degree temperature difference between the healthy grass and the dead grass. The surface temperature of fake grass is even higher, around 70 degrees or more. And the interesting thing is that if you were to replace your lawn with fake grass, the cost of that installation would be the equivalent of water in your lawn for 50 years. Here you can see the surface temperature of the grapevine. It's around about 40 degrees before we put any water on it. Mm -hmm. Now, what we do here is we just spray a bit of water around, around this grapevine and around the tree there, and we do that for 30 seconds every 30 minutes. Okay, and that significantly drops the temperature? Yes, so we look at the surface temperature now and it's around about 23 degrees, but there's a reduction in air temperature of between five and eight degrees, and that, that lasts for that 30 minutes. So how much water are we using to do this? Well, over an hour, you'd use up to about 20 litres of water by doing this twice in that one hour period. So that's a minute in the shower. The other interesting part is that the water will cost you a few cents mm -hmm. over that hour. If you're inside with the air conditioner on, you'll be paying 70 cents for your energy and then you've got your lights and your TV screens and whatever as well. So there's a really big cost saving by actually being outside and being able to get the kids outside as well. So you're using the misting system here. How is it working? The misting system just puts a fine mist of cool water into the air, so it cools the air down. 
and we're getting temperature reductions of up to 10 degrees. So you can operate the misting system for an hour to two hours for the same amount of water that you'd use in the shower for one minute. What amazed me was that these are readily available at your local hardware store. They're really cheap and they don't use much water. So it's quite an um, economic way to start to reduce the air temperature. And they're easy to install. Too. Absolutely. Simple. Yeah, really simple. And half an hour and it's all done. We talked earlier about spraying water around for 30 seconds every 30 minutes. By having the misting system on as well, you actually sustain that lower temperature for a lot longer. We put the sprinkler on about one or two days before a heat wave. It's really important to get that water into the soil before the heat wave occurs. And I put a glass under the sprinkler and once I've got about a fingernail full of water in the glass, then I'll move the sprinkler somewhere else. So does that mean we can let the kids play under the sprinkler on the lawn? Absolutely. It's a great Aussie tradition. We all grew up with it. The beauty of it is that you're actually cooling down the air, you're cooling down your lawn, and your kids are having a great fun time. Yeah.